Hello everyone and uh, welcome to, well for us it's the evening here, this evening's webinar, but I think um, probably i think looking down the attendee list i can see you've joined us from all parts of the world a lot of our uh, um, users and visitors are from the united states where i believe it's the afternoon late evening so uh, early evening so anyway wherever you are in the world a very warm welcome now before we start uh, may i just draw your attention to the disclaimer that i know you can see on the screen as you know trading can be a very risky business so please please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. Very quickly, uh, what we're going to do in the session, we are going to be looking at uh, the markets uh, through um, the prism of volume price analysis together with our quantum uh, trading tools. Some of you I know have them, some of you may be thinking of acquiring them, investing in them, and I know we've also got um, attendees here who are on our Forex program. The book about volume price analysis is on that is on, available at Amazon. Um, all the books actually, it's, it's one of a, a whole series of books which covers um, the forest market, the markets generally, there are books on um, examples of VPA, and there's also a book about binary options. I think all together, and I mentioned it in our last uh, webinars, this book alone has garnered over, uh, it's got more than 280 five-star reviews, and all together they've got 500 star reviews. So out there, you know, there are at least 500 traders who are doing really, really well with the VPA methodology. Uh, it's, it's really a methodology that looks at price action and volume and how the two interact with each other and what they can tell us about what is happening now, but much more importantly, what is likely to be happening next, which is what really what we all want to know. That's all I'm going to say for the time being, because the best way to see volume price analysis um, is on the charts. And we'll, you'll also see on the charts some of the tools that David and I have developed uh, for our own trading taking the principles that are that form part of volume price analysis and converting them into apps tools to sort of help us and make our trading life a little bit easier now the way we work with the indicators you can buy them individually or you can buy them we have sort of bundled deals with uh, uh, where we've put two or three together or we have four packages and if you do invest in them and you haven't done so already one of the advantages is that um when we upgrade the indicators, you will get the upgrade for free. So you only ever pay us once. If you have a package, then when we de develop more indicators, uh, they will automatically be added to your package. Now, I've actually been working on uh, all sorts of things I've been looking at. I've been looking at a little bit more detail at our indicator that is based on a uh, market profile. It's the volume point of control, how we can sort of um, improve it. We're always looking to improve our our tools. I'm also looking at um, um, order flow is something I've been looking at for some time and how, I don't know, maybe not an indicator, but possibly using the information that is available, uh, on, you know, the order flow traders use and how we can sort of put that together with the indicators that we have. And also, I'm also looking at different um, ways of using volume. And one of them in particular is looking re at relative volume. So if you have the indicators and we have these uh, enhancements, these developments, or we develop new ones, if you've got the package, you get it automatically. Um, if you've got individual indicators, whatever it is you will always get the latest version and you don't have to pay us any more money right that's what i'm going to say about that what is there to say about today i don't really know what to say it's been like a bit of a tsunami really um and it's just the markets it's all about coronavirus uh, we've talked about this before i've mentioned it in all my posts my tweets i've been retweeting things from people that i respect and i and i follow and in fact everyone has been kind of waiting for this moment. At what point was the market going to take fright, as it were, at what has been happening out there? From a historical perspective, it's quite interesting. Uh, those of you who know a little bit about these things, um, 
you may have heard something called the Spanish flu. It's uh, it's the Spanish flu was always mentioned very darkly in 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 my family in Italy because it took it took a very heavy toll. Uh, well, it took a heavy toll all over the world. I believe in America alone, nearly seven hundred thousand people lost their lives. That was almost that was about a hundred years ago today. That was a, a a dreadful dreadful pandemic, and that is the word that has really driven the markets the word pandemic at the weekend um if you if you are a trader the one thing you have to do is when you close off your your trading on a friday it doesn't really stop there because whatever happens on a friday evening whether the markets in in america they close off up down um in consolidation they, they you know they leave the, you know they will leave possibly clues as to what is going to happen maybe when they open again uh on sunday evening with globex and the forex market and you know if as a trader an intraday trader you have to sort of carry on and see well what happened over the weekend you only have to look at some of the headlines that were coming through over the weekend and there was this ramping up there's a, a development in in italy there have been some deaths in italy uh, the venice carnival has been postponed football matches have been uh, have been postponed so the whole if you like the whole um, thing with the virus setting aside what's been happening in china because it's kind of spreading to and it comes closer to home if you like to us in the in um, in europe and and not so much in the states yet then the market is reacting now whether it is, a, it is a justifiable reaction or not it's not for us to say all we can do is note what has happened and see what is happening at the weekend try and keep um you know be aware of the of the news and and the headlines because i can assure you the institutions that the the, uh, the high frequency traders they will have program they have programs just to pick on specific words those of you who are in uh, are part of our forex program will know the importance of phrases of specific words that you know come out of the mouths of, of central bankers and the, the algos, the quants, they will be programming their uh, uh, their algos to react to those words. And the word that it was this weekend to do with it is this a pandemic? And I've just pulled this up at the moment. This is uh, this is the guy from uh, the uh, the World Health the World Health Organization. As you can see him in his mask, he was actually in in Beijing. They're not calling it yet as a pandemic, and that will really be the you know the the time when this is. It's not out of control, but it, it, well, yes, it is out of control. The containment is gone. Whether the market, you know, how the market's going to react? Well, they've reacted simply already to the fact that it's, you know, should prepare for a pandemic. It's all could, maybe, we don't know. Um, we, as traders, all we can do is see what's happening on the charts, uh, interpret what's happening in the charts, and hopefully being able to take a position and 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 make some money you some people may find that very cynical and say well you know you're profiting from from this fear and and <clears throat> what is happening in in the outside in the world outside but that is part of trading if you find that uncomfortable then maybe this is not the activity for you what i've actually done is if you don't have a a news feed and even news feeds are really having difficulty in keeping up with what's going on uh, you know you can have the and if you don't want to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, for maybe a Bloomberg terminal or uh, or a Reuters feed, is one of the things you can do with Google. You can actually set up alerts, as you know, then every you know on phrases. So when it comes up, it will uh, it will email you, or you just go into a Google. You you put in the um, you know you put in the uh, the search term. I've just put coronavirus in, and it pulls up under news what is the latest. It's everything's going to be delayed but at least you know in an hour uh, as you can see here pandemic potential but it isn't there yet you've got to keep abreast of this stuff and see what's happening and then what you can do as always we go and see how is that playing out in the markets at the moment and it's it's pretty clear the dow has already been i think it's hit did it hit a thousand david i think it hit it actually it was down a, a thousand points the nasdaq here down uh, 297 s p down 92 and the vix what's the vix doing well the vix 
clearly open, gapped up, but we have a, a big wick to the top of the candle. So if you like, the sting has come out of the uh, the fear, if you like. The markets are kind of um, finding, trying to find their feet and saying, well, you know, it's not a pandemic, maybe it's not as bad. Are we going to have a you know a dramatic reversal given the volume the selling volume that we can see under some of the candles uh on on the uh, indices are probably not but there's volatility candles all over the place so the chances are we may see a retrace to within the spread of today's candles now from a a um a forex perspective you know, if you want to also want to get a view of sentiment and, you know, not just the pandemic, but generally is what happens when you get this time of market conditions. The yen is bought, gold is bought, the dollar is sometimes, you know, is probably bought, bond yields go down. So all the markets kind of come together to reflect what is happening. And that the, the, the fastest moves is you are usually in the Forex market. And these are the Forex specific tools that we have developed. And we can see here, this is just the uh, hourly chart for uh, the tools that I that we use to tell us what is going on with the individual currencies and also the currency pairs. And when we see all the yen pairs firmly down at the bottom here, all being sold heavily because the yen is being bought because it is very much uh, a, a, a risk off day clearly um, and it's just a question of which of these pairs is um, is, is being driven lower uh, as in whatever time frame in fact before we we came on air it was the pound yen which was the weakest of the pairs and in fact I've had the pound yen here on my Ninja Trader 8 platform. I just pull that down. I've got it here. What's interesting is if you look at the hourly chart, you can actually uh, track uh, the moves, the sentiment in the market overall. This was the London Open. This is when the pair uh, really started uh, to move lower. It moved lower. This is the hourly chart. There was a little bit of buying came in, the volatility candle. As I said, when you have volatility, the price action will first move into the spread of that candle. There could be a reversal. In fact, it carried on lower. Then we had a little bit of sideways action until the, the start of the American session, the US session, when we had that dramatic uh, you know, uh, plunge in the indices. And so the pound yen went lower. Support and resistance we have here. We've had um, the, the, the support and resistance on this area here is based on volume. It's not just price based resistance and it's uh, derived from what we call the volume point of control, which is this yellow uh, hatched line here. And the way you use it, markets, you know, they go into consolidation and then you have a breakaway and the breakaways happen very, very much at the London Open. So this is the pound yen reflecting what is ha what has been happening in the markets generally. And what we can see now, this is on the hourly chart, there has been some stabilization. And as a trader, it's all gone now. You've now got to, you know, take that, look at the chart, look at what's happening on the price, see the volume coming in. And if there's trade to be taken to the, to the, in the opposite direction, even against what is going on, you know, the, the world, according to the media, you know, the world is coming to an end. But what you see on a chart as a trader, you simply trade what you see on the chart. But being aware of what is happening, obviously, around you, you have to be in it, immerse yourself in it, but also be detached from it so that you can then take those trading decisions and not allow the noise that's out there to actually influence you. Now, I'm going to pass over to David because um, he's got, what have you got up there, David? You've got the YMs. You've got the Renkos and the, and the other, because the way, two questions. If you are a day trader, in the broadest sense of the, uh, of, of the term, you've got to decide, well, on a day like today, what do I trade? As a trader, you have to make a decision. Are you going to focus uh, your attention onto, onto one or two 
instruments, markets, um, you're going, you know, you've made that decision, you're happy trading the YM or maybe you're trading stocks. It doesn't doesn't really matter. That decision is is down to you. Or when you or are you a trader that basically you look at the markets, you look at what's available to trade because you understand the relationships between all the markets and you understand sentiment and you, you understand what is likely to be driving the market today. It's clearly not fundamental news. The, for a start, there hasn't been any. Everything is down to uh, these external factors and it's going to be reflected in the different uh, instruments and markets and you as a trader say well, okay I'm going to see this is this is today I'm actually going to look at I, gold is maybe probably going up D depends on your account of course and you know whether it's in the futures market direct or a CFD as you could uh, on something like MT4 and MT5 because you can access these markets with not having a lot of capital in your account. You know, when we talk about futures, you're not talking about full-blown contracts here, um, but it's how you approach a day like today. What am I going to trade? There, because there's so many trading opportunities today, it's very easy to think, oh my goodness, be overwhelmed. You know, what's going to deliver me the best trade? Then we've got to see because the moves have been so strong and they're already kind of running away with them, what do you do? Do you wait for a pause point, perhaps to go contrary, or is the momentum just too strong and you think, no way, you know, I'm going to stand a better chance stepping back, looking at the charts, maybe using a non-time-based charts and looking for those points in the move, either higher or lower, where I can actually join that move, and which is why we've also developed these very particular indicators that will help us with those decisions, which on a day like today, although it's been a fantastic day, it actually is a day that brings its own um, challenges, if you like. And one of them is when you have such strong moves, at what point do you jump in? Do you think, yeah, I think I can, uh, I've got the opportunity, uh, you know, to join this momentum, take advantage of this momentum. And, uh, you know, it's not easy. So fantastic day, but it has its own challenges. Now, I'm going to pass over to David. If you've got any questions on anything that we're going to be talking about and what you see, just put them in the chat box and either I or David will answer them either on air or I'll type an answer in the chat box. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Just changing screens. Apologies. Hope you can all hear me okay. Sorry, I just bashed my headset. Apologies about that. Um, are we okay? Oh, there we go. Okay. Should be coming up. There we go. I'm just looking behind me. We we're, we're back to back in this office at the moment. There we go. Um, I've actually started with a slightly different workspace. Ho hopefully you can all hear me. Can you hear me okay, Tony? Yeah, fine. Okay, good. Um, I've started with a slightly different workspace. This is a, just um, another variation. I mean, it's just been uh, an extraordinary day. Uh, a lot of you know that, uh, as, as I've said many times before, days like this are money, what we call money days, when you really have to pile into the market. As Anna said, um, it's it's challenging in the sense of choosing the opportunities because there are just so many across the markets. It's just unbelievable. Um, you do have to choose them. Uh, you can't cover them all. So you've got to pick and choose. And it's a question of, of allocating your assets accordingly. How much money do you put into this market? How much are you going to put in over there? Um, but I can assure you that days like this don't come along very often. And they are days when you have to make a ton of money. Um, Futures traders that we've spoken to over the years say exactly the same thing, that a lot of the money that they make during the, the weeks and, and regular months is, is very much, a, it's, it's what they call small change. It's basically they're up one day down the next. So it's uh, it's dollars and dollars and dimes. But it's when these big days come along, that's when they make the big bucks. So the rest of it is just treading water. And then these big money days come along. And that's when they really make a ton of money on the day. And you have to really pile into them big time when you see the momentum of the market moving. It doesn't matter why it's moving. There is a, a, a logic. I'm just watching these charts. I'll just come on to them in a moment. But there's a logic. There's a there's a, a 
a sense that on occasions traders feel uh, guilty, if you will, about benefiting from um, what is in effect bad news for everybody else where we actually are making money, um, which I understand. Um, some traders have an issue with that, um, which is perfectly understandable. It's a natural reaction. Uh, you're benefiting at someone else's expense. Um, Jesse Livermore, for example, uh, he made a huge amount of money in the uh, in the crash and he was reviled by many of his friends for that simple reason that uh, whilst everyone else was losing uh, losing their, their their livelihoods their income their properties and assets and everything else he was making money hand over fist. he made a huge amount of money in the wall street crash um what i've done here just to move on i've got uh, this is a variation if you will this is the renko charts i've got three renkos slung across the top there top left is 15 second uh, the one in the middle is is on, I think I've got that on one minute actually, so forgive me, I've got this on two minute, but this is on uh, two minute, three minute, uh, and reflected on the time frame below. And basically, it's just to demonstrate that not only can you use the Renko in association with a time-based configuration, so you might have a single Renko chart, for example, uh, with a combination of time frames where you're using it as a as a smoothing of price action, as a trigger for entries, helping you get in and get out. You can also use it in this way in exactly the same way as you'd use multiple time frame charts. You've got three across the top here. And it's exactly the same principle. So it's a variation, if you will, of using multiple charts. And you're just using the Renko chart in exactly the same way. And just what I wanted to point out is when you've got this set at 15 second, the obviously the faster the chart then the the smaller is going to be the brick size and as you move to these slower time frames it gets progressively bigger and on upwards up the time horizon so in a sense it's it's just another great way to match your your renko to your particular approach to the market so if you're looking for a slightly slower slower approach to the market if you're much more of a of a trend or swing for example then you tend to set it to a slower time frame you might have a two minute three minute four minute five minutes something like that and obviously the brick size will be larger accordingly or you scale down as you've got the opportunity on ninja trade to go down to 15 second or lower um, and you can set it up as a scalping opportunity and it then reveals what we're seeing right now for example a very sharp reversal or for a quick reversal this is on 15 second remember nevertheless this is a decent move lower if you're onto this chart you're a slower slower term trader this might not be worrying you because you might have a wider stop loss set etc etc and then you're down onto the time frame charts to look at the volume relationship we've got some decent selling coming in on this candle widespread candle good volume under there so there's decent selling coming in right now and if i just pop this one up full size <coughs> excuse me You'll see the reason why we've got uh, we had this reversal going on it was pretty strong it's been trending up from the last sort of hour or so when we saw the reversal coming in now we're starting to see weakness arrive we've got uh, a bunch of volume here and the market is not really going very far we've got a, a big effort to rally here lots of volume coming in narrow spread candle with lots of volume this one okay that's really the first signal of it we've got this one we could say yeah that's fine but when we see this one developing we've got a wick to the upper body a good volume below that one really hasn't gone anywhere bit of support coming in bit more support but it really doesn't reflect much in terms of the, the, the drive through in terms of the continuation of the trend and then we see the drop off in the in the volume now we're starting to see heavy selling coming in nice widespread candle we're starting to see this roll over and return to what we've seen pretty much for the session which is bearish throughout and you can go up onto to the other time frames and that will be reflected there. So I just wanted to highlight that with the Renko. It's just a great way. It's a variation, if you will, of using multiple Renkos. Just head over onto the um, time brace charts. Uh, here we are, fast and daily. There we go. This is what we've seen. And the, the, the other issue with trading on days like this is because you are so heavily focused on one side of the market to the short side, it is very difficult to uh, get out of the mindset, the mentality of just continuing to, to hammer the market uh, on one side only. And at the back of your mind, you've always, always got to have that that little voice that says okay yeah i'm making a ton of money here but just remember this market may reverse uh, that's the market makers coming in we've talked about it many times before the souffle effect the markets will react to news it's driven by the market makers and they will frighten the market to death 
and then reverse it just as hard. I'm not saying it's going to happen on this occasion, but we're already seeing a half decent reversal coming in. You can see the depth of the wick on these candles here. The market, it's, it's, it's not going to fall all day long. There is going to be some buying coming in somewhere, and that is the beauty of volume. It does reveal that buying coming in. The issue for you as a trader, for me as a trader, for Anna as a trader, is that when a market is so beaten down or when it's roaring up, and you then want to trade to the opposite side of the market, you've always got that nagging doubt that you're actually trading against the, the broader momentum, the longer term momentum. I don't have an answer for you. I just lay it out as a, as a fact of life. We have to live with that. Um, but don't be frightened of getting into a market. And volume is the only mechanism that I know of that will give you the confidence to see what is going on behind the price action, to get a sense of when those reversals are coming in in terms of the volume that's then being applied. Now, they may be relatively weak rallies, but nevertheless, they will be rallies. That rally may or may not impact what you're doing longer term if you see it. And this is another aspect of trading, which is so important. And it's the, the issue of primary and secondary trends. Because when a primary trend reverses into, a, a as we've got today, a primary trend to the downside, what we're looking for ultimately is obviously a primary trend to the upside. But if we're trading short, whenever a reversal comes along and they come in all the time during the daily session, what you are trying to analyze in your mind is whether this is actually a reversal from primary to primary, in other words, a full-blown reversal, or is this simply a pullback against the primary trend? In other words, it's a secondary and volume will reveal that. It's the most powerful application of volume price analysis. It's something we cover in detail in the program because the one problem you have in all trading per se is actually maximizing and staying in a trend. I don't know any trader in the world who doesn't have that issue. We all have it. It's, it's the natural reaction. Once you've got a ton of money in the account, it's, it's building up quickly. Then the market starts to pull back against you pretty quick and your instant reaction is to close out because you want to keep what you've got. It's not, your natural reaction is not to say, okay, I'm quite cool about this. The market's reversing against me, but I know for a fact it's going to carry on in the primary trend anyway, so I'm just going to sit back and, and wait till it does. The, the, the mind doesn't work like this, so you have to have mechanisms that help you, and that's what volume price analysis does. It teaches you, it shows you whether a reversal is, has actually got enough volume to drive it back against the primary trend, or whether it's simply going to peter out in terms of the volume uh, declining if you're in, a, in an, an up, a downtrend and you've got a reversal higher. If the volume is falling away against that price action and the price action is confirming that, the price action itself is looking weak, then that is enough to give you the confidence to say, I'm cool, I'm going to stay in it and it's going to continue in my favor. It's a massive application of volume price analysis. You know, we talk about volume just on a linear basis when we're looking at uh, the single relationships. You know, we go up onto the chart, we're looking at the, the very linear relationships. Let's just pull this. It's very distorted because we've got this massive volume spike over here. Just pull this up a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. Let's pull that up, get that out of the way. Just extend it up a little bit. Uh, you've always got to, obviously, the volume is always going to be uh, reflected against what's gone before. This is why the volume here over here looks, it looks quite low. But actually, when you look at the volume over here, this is massive. And then when you're looking at uh, what is going on in terms of the price action, we're starting to see weakness come in here. We are, we've got, uh, you know, the market's going up. We've got rising volume but the market is starting to top and tail. We've got wicks coming to the top and bottom, and then we get this little candle here. We've got uh, some price resistance coming into play on the accumulation distribution uh, relationship or the indicator. And in addition to that, we're in an area of uh, quite heavy volume on the chart. So, you know, it, it's struggling to get through that particular region. And now we're starting to see a reversal. What have we got? Test of that uh, level there, failed, came off. Now we've got rising volume in the downtrend. The probability is we're going to come back down to this level here because this is where the volume point of control sits. So in terms of trading for the short side, if you were looking at this as a trading opportunity, anything other than a scalping opportunity, I'd say it's probably best to sit tight for the time being because the, the, the probability is that the market's going to get back down to the volume point of control and congest given what's going on today in addition. Plus, we've only got uh, 30 or 40 minutes to run to the end of the session anyway. Uh, but that is what is like to happen. We're going to see a congestion back down here and probably uh, uh, a move through 
until the end of the session without any great further price action. We will see. Just head over onto the YM. As I say all the time, if you're trading indices, please have all three of them up because you'll get different uh, volume uh, uh, perspectives on what is going on across the piece and it just gives you a slightly different perspective. They generally do much the same thing. Obviously, on days like this, they will tend to all obviously move in the same direction. Uh, but on thinner trading days uh, where you have less sustained price action, uh, you will get days where you've got two indices leading and one lagging or you've got one leading, the other two are lagging just gives you a heads up on on where the momentum of the market is it might be the nq that's driving it might be the ym that's driving it or the ym is a laggard it's quite often the case that you'll see the nq and the es uh, moving strongly in one direction but the ym is lagging You've got to remember the ym only has 30 stocks in it whereas the uh, nq and the es are much broader brush they've got a much bigger uh, market cap uh, uh, market spread Just drop that away. Let's head on over to the, the tick charts again today. Been terrific. Let's pull them up there. There we go. We've got the uh, got the YM running here as well. They've been running pretty quick, starting to slow down a bit now. Um, just change these over. This is running at 377 tick. There we go. Just increase that one up there. This is at 987 and this is 1597. So they're running at uh, OK speed at the moment. That's coming off the tick speedometer here, which delivers uh, the real time um, actual or the closest to the actual in order to set your tick charts. Tick charts are again like Renko charts. It's just a fantastic way of, of seeing market momentum. And on days like this, you will see it on the chart. You don't see it on a time-based chart because on a time-based chart, it's governed by the metric of time. On a tick chart, there is no time metric. It's governed by this figure here, 377 ticks. Once 377 ticks have gone through this particular chart, then the candle will close off and move on to the next one. The same here and the same here. So whether those 377 ticks take a nanosecond or a millisecond or a few seconds, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. That's why you see the momentum, because it's, each candle is independent of time. Each one will have taken a different time frame to build. And therefore, you see raw momentum. Other than that, the indicator is working exactly the same way. We've got the volume point of control up here. We've got the trend monitor, which is giving us a heads up. You can start to see here. We're starting to see a transition now on our slowest tick chart into darker blue. We've already transitioned through into bearish here. In terms of the 377 and the 987 here too, we're seeing the transition through into bearish. If that continues on, then that's going to transition through into either darker red or it may go straight through into bright red, depending on how strong the strength of that particular trend is. And in terms of applying a VPA methodology, that's the reason we developed it, because it gives us the best of both. I'll just pop this up full size. There we go. We've got the volume. We can see it coming in here. We've got our volume and price relationship, which we we can then interpret. Got a little bit of buying coming in here under here, and it's just an it's just an elegant way of being able to trade off tick charts, but actually apply the volume price analysis methodology. You can see some buying coming on this particular candle. This is on one minute. I've got these set to one minute, two minute, and three minutes. So this is pretty quick. Just pop that up. Oops, sorry, that's gone. Where's that gone? Sorry about that. Disappeared somewhere or the other. I've lost one of my uh, tick speeds. Perhaps I've knocked it off completely. Must have done. Apologies. I'll create another one later. There we are. I'll just pull that one up there. There we go. There we go. Now we've got a little bit of buying coming in here. Uh, not particularly strong. And it's just trading in a relatively tight range at the moment because we're coming to the end of an extraordinary day, an extraordinary session. And it has been phenomenal. Let's just go on to the, uh, where are we? Currency indices I'm looking for. Currency, here we go. There we go. This is really how the uh, indices have been behaving during the session. These are on five minutes. And as you can see, I've just pulled that over. There we are. We're now, this is the yen selling that is starting to uh, come into the market on the reversal. 
We've seen the dollar, which has been rising since six o'clock, pretty strong at the moment. The pound also has been rising pretty strongly, uh, again, since six o'clock. And in terms of the euro, not a huge amount of price action on the euro. We had some earlier on, but uh, now it's pretty much in the congestion phase. You see there. But this is pretty much the, the one to watch. That's the, that's the yen index. Um, huge buying, very strong buying of the Japanese yen throughout the day. So that's reflected across the, the yen complex. And now we're starting to see that come off uh, quite a bit now as, uh, as, as sentiment shifts once more. Uh, gold, uh, as you would expect, massive day for gold. But that too is coming off. Uh, this is on the daily, just pop that up, just move that chat book out of the way, there we go. I've got the volume, uh, I can actually switch that back on, let's have a quick look. Sorry, wrong one. Put it on the indicator. Just switch that on, volume up and down, where are we? There we go, there we go. Uh, I'll put that on there, put it on the tick, there we go. That will flip the volume in. And what's interesting about that volume which I haven't looked at on the daily, I must be honest, but uh, been on it on the intraday, but certainly on the daily, looking a bit lightweight in terms of uh, such a move higher. I'd expect to see more volume than that, certainly on a day like this, which pushed it from uh, 50 odd, 57, 58, right the way through 80 and beyond. Um, so it's been quite interesting. The, yesterday was a, a very solid day, good volume, Nice spread on the candle, and you're expecting further further rises in gold based on that. Sorry, that was on Friday's candle uh, on the end of the week, which was nice. So you were expecting the market to rally. Obviously, the uh, the moving gold is uh, is largely driven by a flight to safety, and that money is now coming out of gold once more. I have to say, I've never really understood uh, the uh, the investor uh, flight to gold, but uh, there we are. Uh, that's how markets have panicked. That's uh, that's what the market makers and big operators uh, benefit from. It's uh, it's just such a simple uh, mechanism to create a panic reaction, panic fear, and all the rest of it. Now we're starting to see it come off. This is on the I've got the three minute, five minute, ten minute strung out across here. Just going to the middle one of these. Uh, you can see there's a decent amount of buying. We had the selling come off. We came away from, and this is just a nice example of a breakaway. Quite a bit of decent congestion here. We were trading around the volume point of control. Very strong platform of support that was building. We had a resistance level above. So it's a nice channel of price action. And as long as you're prepared to be patient and wait for a congestion to break, then it's an opportunity. And it's really just down to waiting for those opportunities to come along and volume to confirm volume confirm we had the volatility trigger on this one so we might have expected the market to congest on that one it didn't it followed on down to the next one we had even more volume on that one then we, again we had a volatility trigger so you're looking for congestion that's now starting to develop plenty of uh, price action to the downside from the bottom of that but in that candle we had a huge amount of buying coming back in again you can see how weak the rally was here excuse me i'm just gonna switch off a minute i'm frogging my Sorry about that. Um, you can see how the rally uh, was so weak here. And it's it's the point I was making earlier on. If you're looking at a trend, you're in a downtrend, you've got a lot of bullish, uh, bearish momentum in the market. You start to see the market reverse against you. What are you looking for? You're looking for VPA to give you those signals, those clues as to whether this is a true full-blown reversal. In other words, primary to primary, or are we looking at the possibility of a just a minor pullback in the longer term downtrend? Thanks, darling. Um, and as you see here, we've got two up candles. We've got falling volume. What is that telling you? It's telling you loud and clear this is an anomaly. In other words, we're seeing falling volume in a rising market when we should see rising volume and rising price. We're not. In addition to that, we're also seeing weakness in here as well. We've got wick to the upper body, wick to the upper body. What's that telling you? Price action alone is telling us hardly strong. It's not looking very strong. Um, and down it comes. And down we come into the next phase. And then we come down these two and into this one. We get some more buying coming in here. Nice big volume candle. Nice big wick to the lower body. What are we looking for? Yeah, we've got buyers coming back in again. 
Is it very strong? Doesn't look like it. Volume's falling away again, trying to rally. Yeah, we've got a decent bit of volume in here, but it's not looking terribly strong. Hitting this level here, which is now building, very weak level. It's only a, a single level of uh, price resistance because it's been tested once so far. This is a minor level. This is a minor level. And we've got a little platform of support here. This is slightly stronger because it's slightly wider. Uh, it's a couple of times that's been tested and held. So we've got a little platform building here of support. But as you can see here on the trend monitor, heavily bearish, remaining bearish for the time being. And if we go over on to the, that was the five, that was the three, it's up onto the 10. Let's pull that one up. And this just gives you another perspective. We've got the volatility trigger on this white candle. And then we get the reversal back inside the spread of the white candle. Now, obviously, when you're trading multiple time frames, what it also gives you not only perspective on volume and price and the indicators, but it also gives you perspective on things like this when the volatility trigger arrives on a slower time frame. It's a strong signal that that is, in fact, a very strong signal of a potential reversal or at least congestion. So if you're on the faster time frames and it comes up in a slower time frame, pay attention. It's it's one of the you know, trading on multiple time frames is just it, it's trade. It's not even trading 101. It is the it's the starting point for everything. It's using multiple time frames for the price action, for the volume relationships, for the indicators, for everything. And it also applies to individual indicators as well. You've seen it often enough in terms of the currency strength indicator, the matrix, uh, and the array using them in multiple time frames. Again, you can see the volume tailing off here. But then there's going to be a natural falling off in volume because we're now coming to, we've got half an hour left to run to the end of the session. So there is going to be a falling off. Um, everyone. You know, a lot of traders will make a ton of money today and they'll be closing up early and, and just you know banking what they have and say, thank you very much. You know, that's it. Going home time, had enough, made enough for the day, probably made enough for the month, to be honest. Uh, it's it's that sort of market day. Just have a quick uh, shifty round at uh, oil and silver. Where are we? Oil. There we go. Big moves on oil today, as you would expect. Same sort of uh, principles that work. Um, but again, it's exactly the same in terms of the application of, of volume and price. What was interesting about the gold move last week, as we saw this price action, but it, uh, it was starting to look very weak, very toppy, uh, particularly on uh, Thursday, I think it was. Uh, then we have this candle here, look, weakness, weakness. Now we're starting to see that develop today. But having said that, we've got some minor buying coming in under here. So, you know, we've got a wick to the lower body, got decent volume under there. So this is not catastrophic for oil. I wouldn't suggest that oil is going to roll over and suddenly plunge below 50 and on towards 49. This looks like some decent buying coming in here and it'll probably pick up over the next few days and recover, no doubt. Let's go up onto the 10 minute. There we go. Uh, big, big uh, wick, uh, big volume uh, bar to this particular candle. And to be honest, when you look at that, you think, do you know what? Should have gone further than that pull it back a bit you know it's the biggest volume on the within certainly within the day from this is nine o'clock uh, UK time so this is uh, pretty much a full day's trading for us you see this massive volume spike coming in price action hardly looks very strong you would expect a much bigger reaction in price to the associated volume you haven't and then look at the associated volume that follows it's pretty weedy and it's no surprise to see this starting to roll over into weakness. You know, the buyers are just not following through. This is the big operators dumping. They've got out of the market here and they're just withdrawn completely. The market's fallen away. Uh, the volume's fallen away completely. And now they're just uh, they're rolling over into the downward trend. Not a great deal of heavy selling, but there's certainly no buying on that particular uh, phase of price action. Let's see what else is going on here. Okay, you've got it reflected. That's on the 15, pretty much the same picture there. And over onto 30, you've got a two bar reversal building on 30. And if you overlay one on the other, then what have you got? You've got a little hammer candle. So you've got market opens here and closes there over two bars. So it's basically doing that. So it's not terribly strong. Okay, let's go back onto the, let's go quick, have a look at the indices again. There we go. See where we're going. Okay, uh, we're trading, you know, we're on the NQ here, moving down onto the volume point of control. So, you know, it's it's coming to an end. We're going to move into congestion phase. Pretty much the same picture here on the ES. 
So I'm, oh, sorry. Gosh. There we go. Pretty much the same here on the ES. Trying to move away from uh, the volume point of control. Decent amount of resistance in over here. Trading around this large volume area. Volume is uh, is not uh, is not particularly great, and you know we're going to see congestion around this phase now, for the towards the as we get towards the close of the session. Same on the YM there. Looked at that earlier on, and we're just trading around the volume point of control. There we go. Let's just go back onto our Renkos. Where we are. <clears throat> Remember, this is on 15 seconds, so this is pretty quick. If you're a scalping trader, it's I have to say it's one I use a lot myself. Um, I just like to have it because it gives me a heads up, not particularly on the Renko. I tend to use it more on the time-based charts. So I'll have this chart here because it just gives me a sense of what is coming down. I'll group candles together mentally and just get a, a picture of maybe the one or two minute time frame, just get an idea of, of what's coming up at me. The trend monitor will change also, give me a sense of where the volume point of control is, what, what I've got in the way of volume up and down the chart and everything else, and also in terms of uh, support and resistance levels also. Sorry, Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, I can go back to gold. Yeah. There's a question about gold. Sorry, I have the chat box closed. Apologies. Yeah, just, interesting. just go back onto gold. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's had gold's had the the and silver will have followed suit. Uh, I'll pull the silver chart up in a moment. Uh, that's the gold chart. That's the high of the day. It's somewhere about 1682, three, something like that. And it's come all the way back down again. But the volume is not great. Yeah, but you'd already said that. Yeah, you? the volume is not great on that. Um, so it it's it's short. it's quite interesting that uh, for a day when it's the flows into gold have been driven by one thing and one thing only, and that was a flight to, to safe haven, safety. Uh, that uh, flow has now come out again, but the volume is not very great. And certainly on a day like this, you would expect the volume to be much, much bigger. I'm not saying it would be as big as this, but certainly should be you know, well above this uh, particular uh, day on Friday. You'd expect it to be up here somewhere and isn't. So it's, it's a curious anomaly and certainly one that is worth keeping an eye on. Um, now, in the normal circumstances, if the volume was up here somewhere, then I would say there's heavy selling in there. Um, because that's just the nature of volume and the price action is telling you that, but the volume is confirming it. So if the volume was up here somewhere, I'd say, yeah, it's pretty heavy selling in there. But actually, it's not saying that at all because the volume is so low. So it's it's almost like it's it's a, a kind of a, a trap move. It's not to, it, it's almost as though it's been designed to trap move, trap traders into selling gold short. It's uh, quite odd. But it's certainly anomalous and certainly one I would be paying attention to if I were trading gold tomorrow because it looks odd. And if we go and have a look at silver, which I've got down here, which doesn't always follow gold, but generally does in a greater or lesser extent, if I just pull silver up. Got pretty much the identical picture on silver. Again, volume is not huge, and that's anomalous on a day like today. So it will be interesting to see what happens with gold and silver tomorrow. It's nice to see them both breaking away because that's what we wrote about last week. Um, so that's what we were looking for in terms of both metals. Sorry, you just asked the yeah. Sorry, I'll open the chat box up now. Zero gauge apparently has been some massive sell off on the um but nobody could confirm it. Uh it has uh, and it's just gonna check is it because of this big sale which is lowering the volume? Somebody have a multi billion dollar sale allegedly. Uh but what they think is just on which mod on, on gold. On gold? On gold. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
if it is if it was or is a big sale then it would be reflected in volume in one in some way shape or form and i i have to say it isn't certainly not on these charts uh, and i have to say the uh, you know the kinetic feed on on ninja is pretty pretty good um and we've also got trade station running i haven't got that particular chart up at the moment otherwise i'd have a look at the trade volume on on ninja on uh, trade station rather um that's but that's anomalous um you know as simple as that you can look at uh, look at comparing it with other days similar sort of days uh in fact you've got got a sort of example here where the market you know was weak it had volume underneath it but it wasn't huge and the market actually carried on higher and it's oh it's almost the same as that very similar to that that's what the sort of thing you're looking for all the time you're looking at you know you look at this candle well you know clearly it's the highest volume on the on the session and you know undoubtedly there's heavy selling in there there has to be because it's reflected in the volume but it's certainly not the case here and it's certainly not the not the case on gold either so oh sorry oh beg your pardon um there is a sorry you, i you probably can't see there is a wick trust me there is a wick on this candle it goes up to here um so you know that's the that's the bottom of it and that's the top of it you probably can't see it but it does go up there trust me um and the same is true on the gold chart sorry it's not very clear because the the wick's part of the part of the histogram if i go onto the gold chart you'll see exactly the same thing wherever it is there we are gold works like sorry forgive me there we are there we are you got a big wick there but very low volume it's anomalous because under normal circumstances you would expect to see certainly something like that if not more on a day like today and you haven't and that's strange to put it mildly so be interesting to see what it does tomorrow and i don't think it'll do what everyone expects it to do we will see let's just go back to the indices see if there's anything going on there oh yeah okay a little bit of weakness developing it's uh, moving away from the volume point of control so you know there's a there's a bit of a move there if you were inclined so inclined near the end of the session trend minus is starting to transition back into bearish and obviously what will happen on globex we'll wait for the far east markets to open up now they'll pick up the baton and then that will be reflected over on globex as to what uh, the continuation of this move is and how those markets react that's the ym they're all pretty much doing the same thing this is the nq starting to transition back into bearish again we've had the rally higher saw the weakness coming in now we're starting to see the, re the re reversal back low we've got some potential support coming in here we've got quite a bit of decent volume here on the histogram that's got to be breached if we get back down to these sorts of levels then the volume falls away and they move through there it's going to be pretty easy because there's nothing to prevent the market moving through there pretty swiftly other than price based support which we've got a level here which is decent uh, we've got a minor level here we've got one or two minor levels here in the way that's the strongest level that we've got all the way back down to the low of the session down here somewhere and then we are the es transitioning through on the trend monitor we're moving back into bearish territory we're breaking away from the volume point of control volume's okay obviously we come as i say we're coming to the end of the session only another 18 minutes to go um, but the uh we're just picking up the bearish sentiment once more Can I pass back to you, darling? Oh, I was just like, oh, in an hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just going to pass back to Anna.
All right. Uh, thank you, Lisa, about the um, about the gold and uh, that uh, unexpected um, news item that uh, that, that came, across, uh, came across the wires. But as David said, it's the um, it does look uh, very very odd, and uh, uh, we'll see what uh, what happens tomorrow. I've also been I've following, um, looking on my my Twitter feed as well. And what I was saying earlier about when you actually start your trading, and it really does start on Sunday night because you know how the market opens uh, what the forex the forex market opens globex opens really will set the tone with what's likely to happen uh, the next day and if you are an index trader uh, i know not necessarily it may not be your uh, your time zone um, think about globex because there are some fantastic moves on Globex and sometimes the main you know they they we've had fantastic moves in the physical market today but you can get some uh, some good moves in the Globex uh, in Globex and perhaps even think of using maybe limit orders and you know if the sentiment because the sentiment does tend to you know ripple through to the next day into Europe and then you have uh, the US open where you get a lot of volatility and certainly on a day like today, it sort of picked, it really did pick up the baton and 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 run with it. And as we can see, uh, and we've had some big big moves across the across all three: the ES, the NQ, and the YM. But it was just just your trading week doesn't start the the minute the session your session opens. It actually starts, as I said, on a Sunday night, and it is a follow through from what happens on the Friday. Uh, just moving back to the y, uh, to my pound yen, where is it here, which I've got here. Let me, actually, let me go to MT5 for a second and see what's been happening. And that little, um, uh, the currency strength indicator that we use really can be used by all traders, regardless of what you trade, because what is happening to the currencies and the currency pairs really gives you an insight as to what is happening in the rest of the markets. And the and the uh, you know the um, the currency to watch is the uh, the Japanese yen, and we can see here this is the overextension in it, this heavy buying that we're seeing reflecting. Uh, the sentiment that we've had in the in the rest of the market and we have had a you know a bit of a turnover and in fact if you're uh, if you're going to be looking at forex then the pair possibly to look at where you have these the two extremes one is uh, the canadian dollar which has fallen heavily because uh, oil has also fallen uh, you've got this connection between oil and the canadian dollar and you've got them here at a really nice extreme so that could be a pair to consider maybe not tonight but certainly keep an eye on it and see what happens uh, overnight and then coming um, Europe and London tomorrow. Japan has actually been closed today. It's been a holiday in Japan uh, there, but the I know the forex has been working, but their um, uh, their market's been closed. And in fact, the CAD yen is way way at the bottom. This is um this num these numbers here are quite interesting. We see here minus 54, and we see here so Euro CAD which is plus 38. What that tells us is is that the plunge in the in the Canadian has been much much stronger uh, against the the Japanese yen. What we're also looking, I said earlier about how we always looking to improve indicators. One of the um, refinements that we're looking at for the matrix, which is what this indicator is, was it takes uh, the, the the data from the uh, the individual uh, currencies and pairs them and gives us a sense of a strength and weakness in the pairs which are the strongest which are the weakest and ranks them with this um, I said with this uh, with these values is we're trying to uh, what we're looking at is looking at a way of judging we see here minus 53 now is that a, is that a high score uh, for this time frame, is it an average score? Is it a bit on the light side? Uh, to give us some kind of context to the score that the uh, that the indicator has has given us, where we've got minus 53 and plus 39 there, so it gives us a sense of whether there's much more that the the there's much more in the move as it were uh, and you know when you use it with the charts as well because volume price analysis will certainly it will tell us 
you know, what's been happening in terms of trends, counter trends, minor trends, you know, whether they're, 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 they're genuine or not. But what we then want to know is, is there, you know, is there much more momentum left in the move? Uh, because with a time chart, you, you know, you, you've got to wait until the candle actually stops either five minute, one minute or one hour. But within that candle, within that time candle, there is this sense of momentum. And in, and which is why we use the, the Renko chart. So when you use this with the Renko chart together, what we're looking for all the time is being able to see inside the price, what is happening to the price action, what is going on on the inside of the market, because that's where we want to be. We want to be with the, inside, with the insiders. We want to be with that flow. And we want to try and judge whether that flow is a, is a strong, good, solid, uh, strong flow, take the most out of it, have a sense of when the flow is coming to an end or, or a pause point and then we get out and it's the reason why neither David nor I really buy into this idea of, of, of fixed risk reward ratios and you know people say well I, I only look at a chart and I'm only going to take a trade if I can make three times my risk well that would be wonderful, and but I don't think the market cares very much about your your um, you know your your ratio of risk to reward because what happens is when you get a day like today, are you seriously telling me that you see a potential setup and it you know the the, the price is running a running away with it? You say no, I'm only going to stop at this point. I don't think so because if you read any of the trading books by the, um, you know, from hedge funds, from successful traders, they will tell you that it's days like today that you have to really take it and go in and, and take as much out as, as possible. Um, that's the way you make, you know, your, your, your account will then grow exponentially. They don't come along very often, but when they do come along, you really have to take full advantage. Right. Think that anything else you want to say to that, David? Okay, no, just very, very quickly. As I said earlier, uh, the indicators, for those of you who maybe have not come across them before, they're from quantumtrading.com. This is the site. And as you can see here, we've got them for MetaTrader 4.5, NinjaTrader, TradingView, and we're just working, we're still working on TradeStation. It has been really tricky, TradeStation. It's a very, very powerful platform. Lots and lots of features on the platform uh, that uh, some other platforms don't have, and it's just taking longer to code than we had anticipated. But they are in the testing phase now. So once they've been tested, then we can release them uh, to um, you know to to traders and investors that's all for us today um, I, I can't say enjoy the rest of the, uh, the trading day the trading day will for us certainly has come to an end Japan will be opening uh, uh, later with Asia we'll see what happens in terms of uh, coronavirus and uh, whether they've actually got a handle on this uh, on this epidemic, uh, whether it's going to be a pandemic, it doesn't look particularly good at the moment. So um, we'll just have to monitor it and watch the charts, take our opportunities and uh, make sure your stops are in place. Get in when you can come out as soon as you've got, you know, if you've got a profit and it's great and you can, you know, you can run with it. But, uh, but uh, you know, just, just beware that there will be periods when the price is moving so strongly that you will get these unexpected uh, reversals as we saw earlier with the gold chart. Is there anything else you want to say to that? No, that's it. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much for coming along. We will be, um, I'm not sure when the next one is. It may be next Monday, but what we'll do is we'll send you an email and we'll send you the link. And if you'd like to come along, it will be lovely to have you join us. We've got a, a Forex one this week. We haven't decided on what day yet. It will be for the London session. And again, if you want to come along to that, if you're on the list, you'll get a, a link to the webinar and you're more than welcome to come along. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the trading week. It's certainly going to be very lively and I hope for you a great deal of fun. So take care, everyone, and thanks again.